<clears throat> Praise the Lord. Let's talk about peace this morning. God wants us to live in peace. Peace is the most important, well, one of the most important things that you can live in. You know, that is exactly what God sent His Son to do on the cross to make peace with us. And so you must be a son or daughter of peace. You are, if you are a son or daughter of God, you are a son or daughter of peace. And that is what you are looking for with people, with your life, everything. God has called us to live in peace. Your house must be a house of peace. Where you stay, where you go home to, must be peace. It mustn't be a war zone. It mustn't be messed up. God wants it to be at peace. And so you will see today that you can either receive it or not. It's a decision you have to make. Your designer, God, designed you to live in peace and with peace. Peace must be your friend, right? You must make peace your friend because it's for you. It's not, you know, people think sometimes they will not live in peace with this person because this person doesn't deserve my peace. And I'm going to, you know, let them know by what I do act that they will not have peace from me. They are hostile and I will not give them any love. But God designed you not to be able to function in this, in this um, you know, unrest. Unrest is there to disturb you and take your joy and make you sick. So the gospel of Jesus Christ is the gospel of peace. It is the whole message is about peace. It says Ephesians 6, 15, And having shot to your feet the preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, the promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. I have the shoes of peace because of, and I'm ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. We have the gospel of peace. God came, sent His Son to make peace with us. And, and that is, by the way, the, the way that you are called to live. When there's something between you and a person, God calls you to make peace. So you're going to go and sort it out. If there's anything between you and God, then you go and sort it out and you make peace again. And God's forgiveness will come and there will be peace again between you and God. But there's, a, there's, there's deception in this world that person can live without this peace. And so peace about my cross that I must bear. Peace about my situation, my life, that is sometimes very, very hard to swallow. You know, where you are, your situation, your circumstances, all of that. And that is exactly why God wants you to have the peace. Because you will not understand, you know, always what you have to go through. But peace will guard your heart. Peace will keep you. And His peace will keep you together so you don't fall apart. You need the peace of God all the time. You need to be in peace. When you have to make a decision, peace will be the empire in your heart. He will help you and guide you. The spirit of peace will come and rest, put rest in your heart. And so that you will be in a place of rest when you make a decision. When there's not peace, then there's a problem. Right? And so you have to find out why is there not peace. Maybe the salesman pushes you to do something. No, there's no peace yet, so I'm waiting for peace before I can move because I submit to the peace of God. God will sometimes allow you to go through and, and not get your way so that you can make peace with your life. That is sometimes what has to happen is that the eye must get off the seat and you will not get your way until you are off the seat and God is God and you are not. People fight with God. And then they are fighting actually against the peace because God wants to give you peace and you are in the way. And so before you don't get to the stage, you cannot be promoted because you are fighting with God about your life and about His best for you and you're not thankful for what is happening and what doesn't happen in your life. And now you are fighting God. And God wants to give you peace. Get this peace first and then we can carry on. Right? And so... We have to learn how to live with 
plenty and with lack. We have to learn to live in peace, and peace is the, the overruling factor. It doesn't really matter what happens on the outside. As long as it is going well on the inside, that is where you want to be. That's where you want to stay, because that is the child on the back seat that is at peace, at rest, for the father will pay the bill. So, peace with people. So, we're going to talk about peace with people today. And like I said with the marriage seminar, God said to me, look, people, you know, the peace in the house and the marriage is key. And that is what we must sort out. We're going to find out why there's unrest, find out why people cannot live in peace and they cannot address some of the subjects or, or topics in their marriage because of the lack of peace, so they avoid talking about them. So, a peace about my future. I have peace about my future. I know I'm in the hand of God when I get to tomorrow. My father is already there because he's, his yesterday is my tomorrow. He knows everything, can do anything, nothing is too hard for him. If you meditate on these things, peace will come. It's like the love of God drives out all the fear, but the peace of God is left over after all the fear is out. But if you, if you spend time with God, the Holy Spirit will produce peace in you. This is how it happens. You don't work for peace. You, peace happens to you because of Him in you. So it's leading to His peace, guarding you, your heart, and becoming an empire of your heart. Right? It's leading to, um, yeah, leading to His peace, guarding your heart, and becoming the empire in your heart. So peace um, is, by implication, prosperity. This is the Greek, yeah? The quietness and rest. That is what it is. That's what peace means. It's, it's, it also talks about prosperity. It's interesting that God will, will, will talk about prosperity, but He's talking about peace. That, but God says it's because your soul prospers, as your soul prospers, that you will prosper as your soul prospers. If you can't get it up here first in your soul, your outside cannot prosper, because you're going to have to get to who you are first, and peace in Him before the outside can manifest what you believe on the inside. You see? So, peace is also prosperity. When, when, when your soul prospers, you prosper. And then healing, all of that manifests because you are at peace. It's also quietness and it's talking about rest. To rest in God. To be at rest. So, I'm not concerned, I'm not anxious. I'm in peace and I rest in the Lord and His promises. 3 John 2, it says, verse 1, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may, be, may, may, may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. See, that your body will be well, even as I know that your soul keeps well and prospers. You must have prosperity in your mind. Prosperity is, you know, the way that God wants us to think. And a lot of this is just about what His promises are, and that will give you peace. Hebrews 12, 14, continually pursue peace with everyone, and the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. In Afrikaans it says, heilig mark, and I like that word because it's a process. It's, a, it's, it's happening while it's happening. And so sanctification, without that, nobody will see the Lord. But he says this in the same sentence, continually pursue peace with everyone. So I'm thinking, meditating on this, I say, God, but yes, all right. So the transformation process in your soul will develop more and more continually uh, peace in your soul. As you transform and get sanctified, sanctified in the Greek means purification, that is a state of purity, uh, concretely purified holiness and sanctification. But it's a purification process. So every relationship goes through purification process, that we go through, you know, these things that are 
upsetting us and then we go and we talk about them, we make peace about them, we, we settle about something, we, we move into a new direction, we come in agreement with, some, with someone, maybe your marriage partner, that we're going to handle this from now on, we're going to handle it like this. Now we have peace about this, but we never had peace about this, but now we're all children of peace, so we want peace, and so we're going to talk about this. Make this right, right? Understand? So, as you get transformed, peace will grow. Some parts are not at peace. Some parts in the people are not at peace. They have peace in some areas, but they have unrest in other areas. And in this ministry, with the inner healing ministry, we have areas that a person does well, but in another area, they have unrest, they have anger, they have all sorts of things, because that part of the soul is not renewed yet, and there cannot be peace in that part of their soul. Right? Understand? That's how it works. So we have to get full peace, prosper in our soul. And as, as the relationship grows, and peace, reconcile, forgive, negotiate, change is made, peace is restored. See, we, we go and we don't leave this thing. We're going to be peacemakers, not peacekeepers. I'm not going to just accept this thing that is wrong all the time between us. We must make peace. And we must go after why. And we must talk about, negotiate, and talk about what must be done, who's right, who's wrong, submit to the word, and then we make peace, we go forward. See, perfect love drives out all fear and all unrest. You are called to live in peace, not in pieces. Right? You are called to live in peace, not in pieces. Allow God to make you whole and receive His peace. And also stay in the process. People stay in the process. Don't jump out the train and say, look, I've you know, received so much. I feel a lot better. I'm shoppies. Now I'm going to go forward. You will be surprised how many things are still happening in your mind that is not okay. Let God continue to make you whole and help you and heal you. And I've discovered this week also, I've, I've, as you assume that people you know, have peace, but they, they don't. And there's reasons for that. We have to find out why and get rid of those things in the soul and sort them out. So we made in his image, right? Matthew 5, 9, blessed are the peacemakers and maintainers of peace. So continually we are looking for, is there something between us that we must sort out relationships? Then we go and we talk. We say, look, did something happen? Talk to me whatever, I'm maintaining peace, right? Blessed are the peacemakers, not the peacekeepers, for they shall be called the sons of God, or the children of God. If you are, God is the God of peace, that therefore you are made in His image to be like God, you must be a son or a daughter of peace. You want peace. Say, I want peace. Yeah. So, because peace for me, for myself, God wants me to live in peace. If another person is going off his rocker that side, I'm in peace. I'm not going to let that person's choices, whatever, make my peace go away. I'm going to guard and keep my peace, and I'm not going to let this happen. So I'm going to make peace as far as I can. If I can't, then I'm just going to shake the dust, right? What is a peacekeeper? Avoiding true peace, right? Just patching, covering stuff up. Matthew 5, 23, 24. So when you are offering your gift at the altar and you remember that your brother has any grievances against you, leave your gift at the altar and go. First make peace with your brother, then come back and present your gift. God says the peace with your brother and sister is much more important than your offering. Don't come here to me and offer stuff. Go back and make peace. And what he says here, if you know that somebody's got something against you, right? you go and you sort it out and then you come back. Right? God wants us to live in peace with all people. 
That is what He wants first. Before you come and worship, before you bring an offering. And people want to, you know, do this thing like a mechanical. Give offerings because they want blessings. But God is saying, no, 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 that is not so important. Go live in peace with the people first. Did I say something that hurt you? I see that you're a bit quiet, whatever. Something happened. Let's talk about this. I just want to make sure there's nothing between us. You know? And obviously I'm not saying that, you know, that you must be a hyper conscious now about, you know, and go run out of church and jump in your car. Please check before you come here, otherwise you're going to waste petrol. <laughs> Proverbs 6, 16. These six things the Lord hate, indeed seven are abomination to him. A proud look, a spirit that makes one overestimate himself and underestimate others. Ho, ho. A lying tongue, a hands that, are, that shed innocent blood, right? a heart that manufactures wicked thoughts and plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies even under oath. So help me God. And he who sows discord among brethren, that make unrest, discord, that bring, um, you know, division, that bring all of that, that is something that God hates. Don't do this. God hates the unrest. He wants peace. And he wants you, and that's always when they, they come and tell me about this other pastor, look at what he said. And then I'm like, you know what? You know, we can, we can have differences and all that. We don't exactly believe the same. But, you know, if it really bothers you, go chat to the man and see why he says what he says. We don't have enough time to actually go fix the world. Fix yourself. Focus on where you are. Do what you're supposed to do. Stay connected and, you know, holy. Luke 10, 5 to 25, it says, um, I'm not going to read all the verses, but, and into whatsoever house you enter, first say, check this out, say, Peace be to that house. This, this week God said to me, call fire. Call fire by the name. You call fire to come. You call peace to come to my house. Peace be with you. Peace come to my house. You enter your house, you say peace for this house. Peace will listen and peace will come. Right? Peace is a person. Right? And he's going to come. And he's going to enter the house. But he says here, verse 6, And if the Son of Peace be there, I, cho I chose the King James Version because it says it like this, If there is a Son of Peace, if there is a person that is able to receive peace in the house, then the peace will rest on him. But if he's not there, the peace will return to you. <laughs> Check this out. So you can be a person of peace, child of peace, or not. You can be in a place where you don't receive peace because you are not open for peace. You can be in a place of resistance that I don't want peace. I want unrest. Then the peace cannot come to you. You must change this. You say, God, I want to be a person of peace. I want to make peace. I want to live in peace. Walk with peace. Right? Because it's going to affect you. It's going to affect your prosperity. It's going to affect your effectiveness. It's going to affect a lot of things in the spirit. So if the son of peace is be there, your peace shall rest upon him. If not, it shall return to you again. Right? And I'm just going to put verse 10 in here. But into whoever city you enter, and they receive you not the peace, go your ways out into the streets of the same and say, even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwith, notwithstanding be you sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come near unto you. What? The kingdom of God? We were talking about peace. Peace, receive peace or don't. Now he's saying that the kingdom of God came close to you because you didn't want to receive the peace. You rejected the kingdom of God. The God way of doing things and you didn't want to allow God to lead you don't want to come in under his guidance and let him take your life and lead you that's what it's actually saying and and if you carry on you read the rest of the scripture here it says that 
for Sodom and Gomorrah, it will be more easy on that day of judgment than for you. Because they never heard. Nobody told them. But you heard, right? So I'm sorry if you came to church today and you don't want to hear. <laughs> it will be worse for Sodom and Gomorrah, or for you than Sodom and Gomorrah, on the day of judgment. Why, why do people don't want to make peace? Why do people want to stay upset, you know, hurt? Why don't they just want to make peace with their situation, who they are, and then just accept? There's so much to be thankful for. You can look around. You can look around. Just, you don't have to look very far. You can see people that are less fortunate, people that are struggling. You can, and if you start working for God, you will see a lot of that, people that are struggling. So maybe that's part of the plan, is that you will stay in an in a underestimated place of yourself. That it's because of His grace, because of His power, because of His mercy, that I am who I am. Romans 12, 18. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with everyone. And so we understand that if a person of peace is not in the house, then it's not possible to live in peace with this person. If they don't receive the peace, if they want to fight all the time, then we are not going to stay in that place. We cannot stay there because they don't want to receive the peace. Right? And we are called to live in peace. That's what your marriage is also supposed to look like. John 14, 26 to 27 Peace I live with you, my own peace. I now give you, and what, Keegan? Begwinth to you. Bequeath? <laughs> he gives it to me. I receive it, thank you, Lord. Not as the world gives, Titan. Not as the world gives, do I give to you? <laughs> do not let. I like it when the Bible goes this way. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let. I'm not going to allow my heart to be troubled. When I feel trouble in my heart, it's up to me to say, no, peace. I'm not going to receive this trouble. Many are the problems of the righteous, but God helps me out of everyone. I start repeating what the Word says to my trouble. I'm talking to my trouble. I'm talking to my situation. I'm over you. I'm not under you. And my feet are on this earth, together with Jesus' feet, right? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Don't fear. Stop allowing yourself to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and, and cowardly and unsettled. Don't let yourself become unsettled. So the bump comes, you know, the, the storm comes, it bumps you of your little you know place where you stand then the anchor will bring it back because you anchored in peace your soul is anchored in peace now the storm comes the boat comes back because there's an anchor you anchor yourself in peace stay in that place no i'm not going to take this i'm going to reconcile i'm going to forgive i'm going to say look what must i do to get rid of this unrest i'm going to forgive i'm going to trust god with the situation I'm going to let this go. I'm going to reconcile. Come here, my skat. Come on, spread it. No? What did you think? No? Whatever. Yeah. Peace of this world is ignorance. The peace of this world is you stick your head in the sand and you make like nothing happens. And nothing is going on and nothing is wrong. That is the peace of this world. It is based on ignorance. I don't care. I don't care what God says, I don't care, I just want to be in this numb state where I don't feel afraid. I'm just going to use my comfort, my sudden comfort, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll feel a lot better and I'll be at peace. And I'll just stay out of the house later because then there's no unrest. Because if I come in half past nine, she's asleep. That's how people of the world operate. They, they move around these things. Right? They avoid the things. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's not real peace. It's not the peace that surpasses all understanding. This is the peace that you create for yourself by ignorance. 
And so God's real peace is for you to really forgive people, make right with people, walk in peace with people, honor people, you know, put people in the right place, be humble. All of these things create peace. Colossians 3.15 And let the peace, again, let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ, rule as empire continually in your heart. Let Him rule in your heart. Let Him be the empire, deciding what's right and wrong. Deciding that I don't want to lose this. I'll rather do what I have to do to keep this, but I'm going to do it. Right? And in your hearts, d deciding and settling with finally all questions that arise in your minds is that peaceful state to which, as members of Christ, one body, you were also called to live. You are called to live in peace. And be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. This, the joy of the Lord really puts you in another place. The joy of the Lord is what we need. It's your medicine. It's, it gives you strength and helps you to stand. Continue to praise God and worship God because the Holy Spirit will create peace in you. Philippians 4, 6 and 2, 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. See the mixture here. This is like a concrete mix. You put so much cement, so much sand, so much stone and you get concrete. God says, look here, this is my formula. If you want peace, do this. Do not worry first. First step, don't worry. Worry is like meditating on what's wrong. You know, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Let God know about everything you have to know Him in all your ways. Tell God what you need. And thank Him for what He has already done for you. The same God that helped me there will help me here. Then you will experience God's peace, with ex uh, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And I'm saying to you, when I, you know, yeah, I've told this story before, but for you that haven't heard this before, you know, when I was meditating on these things a long time ago, I saw a video one day of a person that was up to be executed. Now there's a glass window, and the people of the girl that he raped and killed, the parents, they are on this side of the window, and the and the person that's going to go to the electric chair is, or uh, lethal injection is on the other side. Now they can talk to each other. Now you must see the parents of this girl versus the person that's going to be killed now. Right? You must see the difference in the faces of the people. I saw this. I said, God, he says to me, look, this guy, this guy is going to go and be killed now has more peace on his face. Look at their faces. Look at how angry they are. Look at how troubled they are. But this person has a peace that nobody can understand. It looked like ignorance. It looked like there's something wrong with this person. But he's now right, ready. He made, and he was pleading for forgiveness. He was saying to them, look, I'm so sorry. But he's going to be killed now. He's not bitter there sitting. Wah. Mm -mm, he's got peace. You see his face ready to go. And I think that that's a marker for us, that we can see that, you know what, regardless of your situation, it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be that you are angry, that you kick stuff. God doesn't want you to operate like that. You get your soul peace first, and then the outside will prosper. If you are in a place where you are thankful, gracious, uh, grateful for what God does, and you stay in that place, God will open doors for you. Because he sees that you are content with what you have. You know, you are happy and you recognize him and you see him in everything that you live. And then the rest will come. So first make peace. Get to peace. Say, God, look, I don't understand what you do. Like most children don't understand what their father does. But I don't care anymore whether I understand it or not. I'm just going to sit here on the back seat and believe you, God. That you are the father, you drive the car, and I'm going to be fine. So is your peace today rooted in the father? Galatians 5, 22 to 23, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, that work which he presents within accomplishes 
is love. Right? The fruit of the Holy Spirit. The work which He uh, His presence, sorry. The work which His presence accomplishes in you. His presence. I want to be in your presence, God, because I want the fruits of the Spirit to be created in me. I want to be more in your presence because I want this. I want the joy. I want love in my heart. I want gladness. I want peace. Patience. Right? Superpower. You need superpower. I see this morning, I saw the bicycles. I said, God, these people get a course before they come to church. These people get a test before they come to church. Are you sure you want to go to this place? Turn around now. Holy Spirit is asking, do you have faith? Right? So you get into this queue and, and you get in the gym and you're going to work peace muscles now. Right? Patience, <laughs> patience muscles. And, and it really works like that. If you live in this and you walk in this, you become at peace. These things don't worry you anymore. It's like, you know, I think it's better I stop now. Maybe Holy Spirit protecting me from another thing that could happen to me. You start thinking like that. When you get all the I and the self-centeredness and all of that dies, you're like not all about me anymore. God has something else here lined up. I don't know what it is. I don't care. I just trust Him. Just trust Him. I am at peace and I rest in Him. And ever temper, uh, temper forbearance, kindness, goodness, um, and faithfulness. But the peace, the peace is what, what uh, the presence of God will accomplish in you. He will give you peace. So I've seen this. I pray for people. They are, they are not well and then they have peace. Some of them go sleep the whole afternoon after we prayed. Because all of that control is at their hands. All of this me, 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 I must, I must, I must is gone. They surrendered. They gave everything to God. <sighs> right? The adrenals now off and now they're tired. They were adrenaline junkies. Right? Gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control. Self-control is very important. Especially if you're married. Against such things, there is no law that can bring a charge. Right? So, Check this out. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But on the contrary, as the scripture says, what eye has not seen and what ear has not heard and has not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared, made and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate, affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed. You must listen to this again. God has some stuff in store for you that love God, that love peace. If you love peace, you love God. They can't be separated. If you love the one, you get the other one. He says he's got good plans for us. And if we love him, then he wants to manifest. Your eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of a person the plans that God has. He's a God of surprises. He can do anything, any time. Nothing is impossible. And you've got to trust God like this. Isaiah 9, 6. For us, to us a child is, is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, and Prince of Peace, the Prince of Peace, may He rule in your heart. May He rule in your heart. Right? And so, Jer Jeremiah 6, just a few thoughts that also came along with this message. They have healed also, they have healed also the wound of the daughter of my people lightly and neglectively saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. See, the, world of the, pe uh, the, the peace of the world. The peace of the world says there's peace, but there's no peace. It's perverted. Perverted peace. You know, it's like this, this marriage that everything is wrong. Everything is hell in the house, but you're saying it's peace. Like, you don't know what peace is. This, the, this stuff is not supposed to fly in the house. 
right? Flee in appearance. It's not supposed to happen. You tripping all the time is not supposed to happen. There's no peace, para. There's no peace. You are deceived. You are deceived. You must get the peace inside first before it can be on the outside. Sorry for the para. I can't need to be passionate. Yeah, but also there's marriages that people don't get, you know, through some of these things and there's not peace. You think it's peace, but you decided not to go there anymore and therefore there's now sort of peace. But you close your heart, you numb yourself out so that you can be able to live in this house because if we go there, then hell is loose. So I trust God with the marriage seminar that we can go into some of these hell is loose subjects. That we can untie them for each other because we are messed up. People are messed up. And they are married and they circle with these things. Right? So, um, Proverbs 16, 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. You see, because if you are a man of peace, you make peace. The people want to fight, you make peace. Say, no, 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 I'm a bleeder, I'm a bleeder. We're not fighting, please. And all of a sudden the guy doesn't want to fight anymore. No, you can, you can turn this down if a person wants to fight. You can bring this down. Yeah, sachte word keer die immigreid af. So, it will dilute the whole anger of the person. You bring a soft word, you say, look here, my friend, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm sorry. I made a mistake, I'm sorry. You know, but people are so on the edge, you can't even blow the hooter and then they want to flip out. What's here for me, Ma? I was there, I was that side. And so, you know, it's not possible to live with, in peace with all people. And you will know what I'm talking about. People don't receive peace. They don't want peace. They want unrest. They're looking for trouble all the time. They can't see that they have a part. They can also live in peace. They don't see that they also can say sorry. They don't see that they also make mistakes. They don't have peace about their situation. They don't have peace about their life. They are in unrest. You can't help them. They can't receive the peace. The peace that you have is not your, you didn't work for it. It comes from the Holy Spirit. You can't boast about it. It's yours because of Him and your relationship with Him and your worship to Him is why you have peace. You can't judge these people. They just, they, either you are a man or a son of peace or a daughter of peace or you're not. And we have to pray, God, grace for people that cannot receive peace. Grace for them so that they will come to a place where they can also enjoy, you know, that the stress is not there, that they don't carry these burdens and heavy things, that they can settle down and know that God has got this, He's got me in His hand, He will never leave me, He will never forsake me, He can do anything, I'm safe, He's always provided, He's always, always made a way for me, I can just, you know, live in peace. Right, let's pray together. Thank you, Father, this morning for this message of peace. I pray the Prince of Peace, through the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I see that God is saying, cast your care onto me because I care for you. I'm seeing Holy Spirit says to you, look, it's that easy. It's going to take only that faith that you will say, God, take the burden off my shoulders this morning. I give it to you, God. I want to be like that man that is in trouble but can be in peace. I want to be that woman that doesn't stress anymore, that is not in anxiety. Anxiety becomes your prayer part, makes you afraid and causes unrest in your heart. I pray God today, we, the children of God, come against, come against this in Jesus' name, come against the unrest, come against the anxiety, the depression, in the name of Jesus. For my brother, my sister, we say no, no more. This brother and sister made a choice today, they're going to let this unrest go. They're going to let this anxiety go. I'm not going to allow my heart to be troubled anymore about things that I cannot do anything. I cannot even 
add to my length anything with worry. I cannot do anything and achieve anything by worrying. And I'm going to let go of worry this morning. I'm going to fire. I'm not, you are, you think you're my friend, but I say, footsack in Jesus' name. Get away from me in Jesus' name. Spirit of, of anxiety and worry and complaining. That complaining keeps the anxiety there, my friend. You got to change your words. You got to start lining up with the word of God. You're going to have to start saying that God will make a way. I don't know how. I don't have to know how, but I trust God because I want peace. I want peace. I want to have a comforter that helps me. And I'm going to let go and let God. I'm going to let this go. I'm not going to care anymore because it doesn't help me. It just hurts me. It just takes away my peace. So if it's you this morning, make a decision. Say, God, I do not understand. Jesus says, what I do now, you don't understand, but later you will understand. Don't go and look for the peace of this world. Don't go out anymore and go seek what the world seeks to make, make them feel better. When you talk and when you complain, it does feel better for the moment, but it is like poison that you drink and it will hurt you. It will take away your eternal peace. It will take away the joy of the Lord. Because you are opening up to doubt, unbelief, fear. And God doesn't want you to live under these things. So today as you make a decision, you say, God, I turn to you like a flower leaning towards the sun. I turn to you because you are the only way. I'm done with this story. I'm not going to complain anymore. I'm going to focus on you. I'm going to change my words. I'm going to act in faith. I'm going to speak the word of God over my situation. I'm going to expect. And even if you only have Psalms 23. Even if you only have one scripture. Repeat it before you actually say something bad. Just repeat what you know. He will make a way. My God will make a way. Yes, he will never leave me. Never forsake me. Yes, He will provide. He's my provider. Say what you know and what you believe from God and see the outside change and, and your soul prosperity will be built up and you will change on the inside and God will give you peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I say, Yalla. Lekker zondag.